This is The Sand Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, but the real star of today's show is you, the pit crew, because you are here for today's edition of the Pit Stop, our Monday edition. Happy Monday to everybody out there. Hope you're having a good week so far. Just getting things kicked off for this week, really, the beginning of the week. Lots of good things going on. Hope you had a good weekend as well. I did. I did some uh, Nordschleife practice. I played some Wreckfest. I did, hung out with some friends. I watched some racing on TV. All sorts of good things this weekend. So perfect way to uh, come into the office and get things going on a Monday morning and just sit back and talk about sim racing. And there's a bit of news to talk about. There are some things worthy of discussing in our world of sim racing. And I always look to you guys first. Um, you know, what is going on out there in your world? What do you think is the coolest, hottest thing in sim racing? Is it a new game? Is it a new product? Is it anticipation of a new game or product? Or is it the racing itself? Maybe an eSport competition you watch? Or better yet, maybe it was some racing you did. Maybe you know of a great league and a great series or somewhere we all need to be looking to have some sim racing fun. So be sure to let everybody know. Because I know a lot of guys, I do get emails from people asking for recommendations for leagues and things. And it's like, well... You know, the best recommendation are going to come from our community. These are the guys who are out there running in various leagues. I run in a couple myself, but, I mean, you can only run in so many. So, again, if you know somewhere that's hot, fun to race, regardless of sim, be sure to let everyone in the audience know of those great leagues worthy of joining. So, um, things coming up. We did, uh, you know, last week, I think it was, we mentioned Assetto Corsa, and they had put a post. This thing's not working so well. My whole Firefox crashed this morning. It's time to tr plan your trip to Monza. And that's really all they did. They showed some eSport type activities or at least some uh, driving. They have the name SRO eSport GT Series involved in it. See you in Monza April 13th and 14th. They're big sponsors. As we scroll up today's post, a little bit different, but now we actually have a graphic. So it's round one. This is going to be round one and what it looks like it's going to be. This is the GT4 European Series, GT Sports Club Renault Sport Series, and this is all going to kick off at Monza April 12th through 14th. Three hours of Monza being the main event, coinciding with the Blanc Payne GT Series. Um, so that's kind of cool. This is going to be a big deal. We've been really waiting on this. I mean, for me... As soon as Assetto Corsa Competizione came out, as soon as they announced the platform, the type of uh, 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 sim that they are going to run, I immediately thought, ah, I think this is being built to be eSport ready. Uh, yeah, I actually use an obscure version of Firefox for the news because I needed a browser where I could have like 65 favorite pages ready to go, and I couldn't have that be on my regular browser, so... It's sort of my backup browser that I only use, funny enough, for this particular show, the, the Pit Stop. Um, kind of echoey. Um, don't know why it would be kind of echoey. We should be all good. I'll double check my mic, make sure I have the right mic set. Uh, everything should be all good on that. I only see one audio source. Not sure what's going on there, Tim. If anybody else gives the same opinion. I did do a mic change. This is supposed to be a much better mic than what I have been using. Uh, and I think we sorted out all the bugs. I thought we had sorted out all the bugs. Uh, looking in the eSport world, I've told you guys about a little bit here uh, about the ESL Map Free M-A-P-F-R-E Grand Finale. We did the interview with the guys from Avid Chronic Racing. I don't know if you guys remember Risto and the guys, but uh, here is the, the final, not the final. Well, yeah, this is the final event. This is the big one. All of the marbles. And, oh, I never know if I should give you the results. You know, I watch a thing like ESPN, and what do they do? They give you the highlights, and they, they basically tell you the end of the story. Uh, there, there's Risto. We know Risto of Avid Chronic Racing, and that looks like Kevin Siggy right there. Uh, I know Kevin Siggy as well. Some, some of the best talent in all of sim racing took part in this event over the weekend. This is the Movie Star Esport. This is getting massive coverage in real life. Uh, you know, in terms of on TV. Hey, Smooth, Smooth, getting in with the donation. Yeah. Yeah. So you'll be able to find that race if you want to find out. And I will go ahead and be, play spoiler. It looks like Kevin Siggy went on to win. Risto Caput, uh in second. And our other good friend, Adam Pinces, finished in fifth, it looks like. So good turnout by Avid Chronic. Um... So congratulations to those guys for that, for sure. All right, what else do we have to talk about? Um, dirt. Dirt. It's just a week a week away, you guys. I keep telling you. I, I don't know if my version that I got includes it or if I'm going to have to go buy that separately, but Monte Carlo Rally will release 
part of Dirt Rally 2 Season 1. That's coming up in just over a week, a little under a week at this point. Um, so, and this picture, actually the picture there shows more snow than we saw in the video. So maybe there will be a little bit more coverage on the ground than we than we thought uh, we would. Okay, it sounds like sounds like my mic is okay. Um, that's good to know because I have put a lot of effort. You know, every time I change things, it makes it very hard for me to troubleshoot. Uh, you know, and know what you guys are going to hear. So, Race Room also had their another one of their big events. This is the fourth round of the GT Master Esport Championship. This was from Nurburgring. Nurburgring is all over the news this week, it seems. And here we see some of the race going on. And our good buddy, Jack Keatley. This guy is really hard to beat when it comes to Race Room. And despite there being some other names like Florian Haas or Kuntz or Bonky and I mean, just some Baldy, I'm looking at the names here. Brzezinski. Uh, this is the who's who list of esport drivers in this competition. Jarzef Honzik back there in 22nd place. Rene Kirchhoff in 23rd. I mean, big, big hitters. But Jack Keatley in the world of race room, is there really anybody any better than Jack? Uh, I know there are a lot of guys who can fight for second, but I think really if you added it up, Jack Keatley might be the best race room driver on planet Earth. So uh, looks like he went ahead and ran away from and won round four of the the ADAC GT Masters, another very big series. Yeah, Jack with the long hair. Long haired Jack. He's a fun guy. He is really fun. He's a great guy. Um, What else? What else? Uh, Forza, I didn't care about their broadcast. Set. I haven't even, you know, this came up all over my radar, and I have to confess that I didn't go in depth and find out exactly what they are talking about. So in some cases, when I'm bringing you the news, I have to tell you, I'm a little bit selfish. Uh, the news that I care the most about, I, of course, will go into great detail. And the stuff that doesn't apply to me, and is, and I'm not trying to say anything negative about Forza at all. Forza is a great sim, great game, great community. Uh, but it's not where I play most of my miles or drive most of my miles. So I'm not that in tune with Forza. Dave Blair would be our in-house Forza specialist, but Forza Monthly, the Forza Race Regulations Update. So apparently they are making some changes to race regulations, and that could be, that could be, a, you know, look, read between the lines kind of thing. That could actually be them setting things up for their next round of esports, so to speak, where you're constantly trying to uh, make it a better competition. You know, that's what we talk about here on the show all the time is, are these competitions fair uh, are they being done in a way that really brings out the best competitor and the best best competition? So uh, good for them for making changes, I hope, in the right direction. Uh, just going to blow through this real quick. Over the weekend, Gran Turismo had their Nations Cup eSport. This was the them getting back to business. This was that one-off event that they're doing in Paris. It was an invitational, so a lot of the names you saw were guys who were actually in the previous year's final so, uh, anyway, uh, Rublar goes on to win the Gran Turismo Nations Cup eSport round. Cool article here at Autosport. So, this is him getting his name into the limelight for sure. We have some video at the, excuse me, at the Gran Turismo Facebook page where you can actually see some of the event. This actually made me laugh. When I went to the video and saw it, I'm like, oh my god, they got, they literally are making these guys run in everything, which... On one hand is cool because by the end of the day, you actually uh, uh, by the end of the day you maybe you know who the best sim driver is versus a very singular discipline. So this is them on a rally cross event as one of the many events that they did in that Nations Cup. And again, here's another shot. This is from Thrustmaster. So Nicholas Rublar. Thrustmaster sponsored driver for winning the first World Tour of 2019 FIA certified Gran Turismo Nations Cup championship. Uh, so he wins his place in the world fin final. So from that, does that mean that we're going to see a bunch of individual events to determine the outright world champions list that will then go to the invitational at the end of the year, I'm assuming? Um, so there you go. Uh, ba, 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 ba. what else? What else do we have to talk about? I see you guys talking about wheels. Here's another shot of Nicholas. Um, so it's all over the place. I mean, it's on their Twitter page. It's on their Facebook page. That's, uh, I almost thought that was Brian Meckberg. Uh, that would be the wrong camp. 
<coughs> Brian Meckberg being an employee of uh, Forza, and it was actually him in that Forza video. If we'd watched that video on the race regulations, that's Brian Meckberg right there with the glasses on the right. And we go back to our Gran Turismo, and that's I thought that was Brian Meckberg for one minute there on the left. Okay, what else? Oh, you guys like my new shirt? This is the Simpit Rick Motec Endurance Team commemorative shirt from Sebring, where we didn't have the best of days, but we did have the best of times. Um, so anyway, there's my Sebring shirt. That's new to my wardrobe. All right, what else? That's not really news, though. That's just sort of more personal stuff. Uh, so a lot of people have been waiting on the podiums. Uh, I believe they were originally in a ship at the end of November, beginning of December. That didn't happen. They got pushed back, and April was going to be the new delivery date. Well, apparently the first batch are due to ship out on April 30th. So uh, there's a lot of speculation. Would they make that push back date? Uh, you never know. When a company pushes back, it's like, is it just one problem or is it multiple problems and will they really be able to make this new date because where did they come up with that date but apparently it looks like they are shipping out april 30th which is great news we'll be getting one here to review on the show and they say due to high demand they're nearly sold out i suppose if it was high demand they would be sold out i would call that moderately high demand uh but they are nearly sold out and the next batch won't ship until june so if you've been on the fence and you're really wondering about it I am the shirt guru. No, Billy Strange is the shirt guru. That guy has so many cool... All of my shirts, it's like my entire wardrobe in some way, shape, or form has been replaced with things that say Simpit. I don't know how many shirts I have that aren't Simpit related. Um, so, but that is great news that F Fanatic is coming through on that wheel. And a lot of people are eager to get theirs. I'm eager to try it out and see it, touch it, feel it, smell it. Well, I hope I don't smell it. Better not smell it. Uh, K.A. Amir asks, when is Feel VR releasing theirs? You know, they've been so weird with dates that I've completely forgotten about fee Feel VR. Um, they, they, yeah, they need to get it together. Uh, just a little heads up. Wednesday, we will be doing the Rick Motec, Rick Motec Hot Lap Hump Day Challenge. I have a little conflict. Uh, you know... I have a few conflicts that are going on right now, and I, I'm sure all of you guys can feel vapor. Um, I'm sure all of you guys can relate to what I'm about to say, but um, conflicts in my schedule. You know, I'm running the Lionheart Racing Series, and they run late. I could do Hot Lap Pump Day and that race, but it would be like eight hours in the cockpit nonstop. I don't know if I can do that, but uh, more importantly, if you're in the southern Florida area, there's no reason why you haven't gone. Well, there's no good reason why you haven't gone by the Rick Motec uh, headquarters there in, in the Miami area of Florida. But every third Wednesday, they do Hot Lap Pump Day. That's at 3 o'clock Eastern time or 3 o'clock Florida time. Uh, I'm sorry, 6 o'clock Florida time, 3 o'clock my time. And that's when I will start my stream and we will be doing Hot Lap Pump Day. I'm going to have to figure out how to do these dual events. I might just have to cut myself out of the last hot lap hump day uh, the last hour and then the other conflict i have is even more brutal may 3rd through 5th is the nurburgring endurance race on iRacing, and i'm really looking forward to that although my practice has not gone as strong as i'd like um but what i would like to do oh the other thing is that i now might have an opportunity to get back in that blue volvo at button uh, no at big willow big willow uh, Willow Springs on the big track. Um, Smooth asks if I have a live stream Q&A. Sure, right now. Hit me. Hit me. What's your question, buddy? I'd be happy to try to answer it for you. So, yeah, I have two scheduling conflicts coming up immediately. I have this Rick Motec Hot Lap Hump Day, and I think that's the next Lionheart race. And then on top of that, I have May 3rd, two different 24-hour races, one in real life and one in sim life so i'll have to do some juggling and figure out how to make that all work uh but just so you know you should get out there if you're part of the pit crew you will be eligible to jump in and play with us on hot lap pump day if you are part of the stream and just watching we usually give the password out as soon as we've gotten all the regulars into there so uh be sure to come play come tune in whatever you want 
Um, I am currently working on my GS5, G4 seat, my Sim Experience review. Been working on it, been playing with a bunch of different settings, and, you know, anybody who knows me knows that I am not a fast reviewer. I don't even try to be a fast reviewer, because I just really firmly believe in good information, and I don't believe, I believe also in placebo effect. I believe that we inherently want to love and hate things right out of the gate, and, you know, on s the more complicated the device is, the more tuning, the more time, the more settings, the more work it takes to get it dialed in. And that's just part of the business. My G seats have been in that way. I've tried it on a bunch of different settings, getting it to the point where I have it really dialed in for my favorite cars, my favorite Sims. And that does take time. So uh, to hold you over until my review, Darren, who's in the audience here of Sim Experience. He actually put out a video here with the GS5 G4 seat by Sim Experience introduction video that just came out on the 16th, so two days ago. You can check that out. There's Darren. It's been a long time since I've Dar seen Darren on camera. There he is, Darren Ganji of Sim Experience, and uh, you can check that video out and find out all the details of the GS5 seat before my review comes out. And I am worry working on that very heavily. Uh, yes, yeah, somebody was commenting on the 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 amount of noise that my seat makes oh there's me i was in that video that was pat dotson showing off i think that was back in the gs5 era if i'm not mistaken um i have had the seat for the last few streams i've done i've had the seat cranked up to like the maximum and i'm in headphones so i don't hear a thing not one thing at all but i see the comments on the video of people wondering what's going on uh but that is that is, I mean, for you to realize or think about what's going on underneath me with that seat, it's the equivalent of having a motion system. That's like having a four actuator motion system underneath me. Um, so it depends. I, I mean, I think for most most sim racers, there's only two people. I know, two types of sim racers: those who wear headphones and those who have big sound systems and crank them up all the way. Uh, because that's what it's all about. You know, we want the roar. We want the thump. We want the the rumble of being in a race car. And that only comes with extreme volume or quality headphones. So uh, I've never heard the noise that everybody's talking to unless it's going on like in a moment that I'm taking on or off my, uh, my, my headphones. But anyway, you can check that video out at Sim Experience on their Twitter page and... Uh, Find out for yourself all the details that make that seat move, make it noisy. Uh, this is kind of interesting. I know Sim Experience is working on this. I think a lot of companies are, are working on this right now. Really, since we went to the world of direct drive wheels, uh, ever since direct drive wheels, we've kind of been back to the era of wraparound cables. And not to take anything away, I mean, I find it doesn't even bother me as much as you think it would. Uh, you thought they were sideburns. No, those are my, my crazy headphones. Um, yeah, roommates ruin sound system racing. They sure do. I run in headphones because it's better for all of my neighbors and my brother. Um, but back to the story, uh, you know, wraparound cables, unless you're on like a, a, a stock wheel, when I say stock, you know, Fanatic 2.5, uh, Thrustmaster TS series, Logitech, you know, all of these wheels have electronics in the rim that passes through the, the steering shaft of the wheel. But in the world of direct drive, when you have a solid core post that comes out of those motors, it's put us back to the era of basically uh, uh, wraparound cables. The only way to get your buttons powered up on your wheels is to have a cable going back to the wheel base. And that's kind of annoying when you're talking about maybe a two, three thousand dollar $3,000 wheel. We want something prettier, nicer than that. Uh, an option, a solution that's been used and, and sometimes in some cases works and sometimes hasn't, has been using like a pass-through, uh, uh, oh, what do they call it? Oh, I had it in my head and now I, uh, it's what they use on a helicopter so that the rotors can spin. It's what they use on a BMX bike so that you can spin the handlebars a around. Uh, but there are uh, slip joints, slide joint. Oh, come on, Sean, brain is mush. Um, and that has been one alternative, but it also is... A high wear part, unless you spend a lot of money to buy the super duper high end versions of those kind of things. Um, yeah, and my mic, you know, the microphone on those videos, Scott, great point. I use a blue Yeti microphone for race streams because I need a little bit more open a mic than this one, because I don't want a microphone in my face when I'm racing. Um, this is a much better in your face microphone. 
So that microphone picks up every sound. I mean, you hear things going on in the other rooms of this house. That's how sensitive it is. So anyway, uh, back to my story. I'm so distracted so easily. Look, Squirrel! Uh, SimCube, uh, SimuCube is coming up with a solution. This is their wireless solution. Don't have any pricing. This is just something they're teasing and they're, they're letting you know it's something that they take seriously and this is going to be a wireless connection. So, you know, Slippering, thank you, Neo, Neonite. Slippering, that's exactly what it is. Um, slip rings, when they're affordable, break. Slip rings that last are very expensive wireless when it's done properly i mean i have one keyboard that works wireless perfectly and i have another wireless keyboard that is a piece of shit um so not all things are created e equally and that'll be the bar that'll be the bottom line when it comes to that it's not a matter of whether it can be done it's a matter of is it good enough dj racer i would not if I had to do it again, I would not start with a Yeti microphone. I think the Yeti microphone is a pretty good microphone for like a two-person interview across the desk. I think it's pretty good for that kind of activity. But it's very open mic, and it's very uh, 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 sensitive. It just picks up every noise. I think you can do better in the world of streaming, but it always comes down to your usage. How are you using the microphone? Um, and then it comes down to, are you using it directly? I mean, like, you know, there's no debate that Billy Strange has better audio than I do. Well, Billy Strange uses commercial, uh, audio gear. So his microphone isn't USB. It's, it's, uh, uh, the triple plug. Come on, Sean. Uh, XLR plug, like on a camera and on high end equipment and real equipment. And that then goes into a mixing board and all sorts of stuff and then goes into his computer. This is just a USB microphone. Um, and Sim Experience also working on a wireless option. And yeah, and you know, as a guy who's seen just millions of rigs out there, uh, whether they be commercial rigs from like a CXC, a Sim Experience, a VRX, or all the competitors or independents that do those for like trade shows and things, I've seen every single option. And when it comes to a direct drive wheel, nine out of 10 of them are still on a wraparound. Still on a wraparound. Uh, and it's a, a Audio-Technica, the AT2020, by the way. Um, yeah, but I wouldn't buy, I would not buy another Yeti, just for anybody considering streaming options out there. It's not my favorite microphone, I hate to say. I'm usually a pretty positive guy, but that microphone's just been very meh at best. Um, okay, what else? What else? Uh, I like showing when sim companies get out there in the real world. Uh, whether they're doing demos, uh, whether they're doing trade shows, or even the best scenario of all when they're at a racetrack. So, uh, Cart Craft had an event here. This is going on at the Australian GP, the F1 Australian GP in Albert Park, Victoria. And I'm going to hit play real quick on the video. You can see, it, I'm guessing they probably have like a D-Box. I've built a D-Box karting sim before, uh, and it looks a lot like this in action. So I'm assuming that's what they did. A uh, really good platform. If you're ever thinking of a way to build a cheap or a small platform rig. You know, one thing that does work is a go-kart chassis is about as small as you can get, rigid enough, and a good driving position. And believe it or not, those fiberglass seats can even be comfortable if you get one that's the right size and angle for you. But anyway, a cool video of karting, uh, kart craft, getting some exposure in the real-life world. Uh, what else? What else do we have to talk about? I mentioned Wicked Cushion Racing. This is the efforts of uh, real-life Craig Kinzer. So Craig Kinzer, who is a very known outlaw sprint car, sprint car driver, uh, is part of the creation of the Wicked Cushion eSport team. And this team has been in existence. They, I, we, I think we talked about some of the drivers they've picked up. But, you know, we talked about NASCAR heat. We talked about iRacing NASCAR. We talked about the Blanc Payne series, whether you're talking about iRacing or whether you're talking about the coming uh, Assetto Corsa Competizione. We've talked about ADAC. We've talked about all the big eSport things going on out there. Uh, one that isn't getting a lot of exposure yet, but I wouldn't be surprised if we see a lot more from it coming because reading between the lines, again, looking behind the scenes, you know, Kinzer Racing forming an official eSport team focusing on the dirt oval stuff. I'm sure we're going to see more, and I wouldn't be surprised if we see more involvement from 
the series themselves and even maybe even more money coming into those series as well. Uh, real fun racing. I don't know if dirt racing has gotten the attention it deserves. Actually, to be honest with you, I don't think dirt racing has gotten the attention it deserves in real life or in the sim life. Because I'll tell you what, if you ever take the time, if you've never been to an outlaw sprint car race, if you have never seen those crazy dudes running eight, 900 horsepower in a quarter mile or shorter dirt oval sideways, it is a must see. It should be on your bucket list. You know, I've been to a lot of NASCAR races and I don't think the best NASCAR race could actually hold up entertainment value to like a mediocre dirt race. It is so exciting. So uh, same thing goes for sim racing. It's a different discipline. It is fun and it, it takes extreme talent to, to rise to the top. Um, this is not what I wanted. Ah, uh, this, this is all over. It got sent in to me, so I'm just mentioning it. If you guys want to hear or uh, see the video, this was put out by Raptros Gaming. I think it was actually put out by Red Bull, so this might be a repost that I'm looking at here. I believe it is, actually, but somebody sent it in to me, and I'm covering it because it came up on every sim racing radar that I have, so I figured it's worth mentioning, but... Uh, it's, the, it's a video calling the legitimization train. Red Bull Racing teams up with G2 Esport. So G2 Esport has grown into like a super team. Uh, do I have another video on this? I had the list of their drivers somewhere. And it is insane how many drivers are now part of the, what is now the Red Bull G2 Esport team. So that's cool news. More growth. Um... Many of you guys don't know this unless you watch my streams, but I recently did uh, uh, created a second account in iRacing. And that account I, I, I signed up for with a free membership, and then I immediately had to start buying content because I need that to parallel my main computer so I can do two, dual camera streaming. Um, so one thing it made me think about is the cost of iRacing. And a lot of people, I think, jump into iRacing and they don't realize how expensive it is. They just start buying things that they want. Oh, I want to drive the catalog. Oh, I want to drive at Watkins Glen. And they just start buying things. And maybe for no reason. And maybe it's stuff that they're not even going to need other than that day that they're supplying that, that personal need to try something. But the money starts adding up very quickly. And then all of a sudden, maybe you don't have the money for something that you need on the spot. Anyway, the reason I'm saying this, this is an article that was posted on Reddit, and I think this is a great article here. And it's called The Useful Reference Guide to Paid Oval Tracks in iRacing 2019 Season 2. Um, a lot of the guys wonder why we had picked the Ferrari for our endurance team. And the reason why was because me and a, a few of the guys who helped me administer the team were looking at the schedule and looking at the cars, and the Ferrari was going to be the best bang for the buck. We could buy one car and run the most events and keep the budget small for the team members so that not everybody was constantly buying content, and it saw us through last season. Um, this article kind of is using that same kind of thinking. Like, before you just start buying tracks, before you just start spending money unnecessarily, maybe you should look at the disciplines that you're going to run Look at the schedule that they have for the season and make sure you have those tracks first. But what they did in this article is they went through track by track talking about which series and how often they're used. So, for example, the most used premium tracks are Bristol and Michigan, appearing eight times. So if you're going to be an oval racer in iRacing, Bristol and Michigan are going to have eight opportunities to be raced in this current 2019 season two. And that's the way they're looking at it. So they go through track by track. You'll find this on Reddit. I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but just as we scroll down, let's use a, a an example here. Auto Club, which just had a, a you could call it a failure of a, a NASCAR race. I call it a failure when only 35,000 people fill stands that can hold like 80,000 people. Uh, that's not a good day for the sport, the track, or anything. Um uh, David Grunnell, no, 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 hold on, I'll, I'll come back to that in a moment. I am not crashing anybody, it is not a secret account, I will tell you exactly what it is. Uh, but anyway, Auto Club is being used by the iRacing C-Class, iRacing W1, iRacing B-Class, 
uh, A Class and IndyCar are five series that are using Auto Club this season. So anyway, if you're considering what content to buy, you might want to look at this article or look at this article or listen to what I've said to do your own research and figure out what class are you really going to be running. Do you have the tracks to complete that series that season and and use that as a starting point before you go spending every penny you have? Uh, as far as my second account, it actually is under the name Greg Cole. That's my brother's name. And despite the fact that he doesn't sim race, he used to. Uh, my brother, 20 years ago at this point, was a pretty avid sim racer. And then he just stopped doing it. Um, I set the second account up in his name, kind of hoping that maybe someday he would use uh, that account. There was a Sean Cole 2 account created for one point in time in order for me to do my uh, getting from rookie to D-class license video. And then I've never used that account since. I don't think I've logged into that account in probably over three years at least, at least. Uh, maybe more than that even. But there is a uh, Sean Cole 2 I will say hi to Greg, and just for those who don't know, my brother is, is a huge supporter of the Sim Pit, and it's safe to say that without my brother's support, the Sim Pit would not exist. I mean, you could consider this my uh, shed, if you, you you know if you know what I mean. Um, I have this out of order. Here's that other article. I knew I had more on G2 Esport joining forces with Red Bull. Uh, I've mentioned this, obviously, at the beginning of the show. I've mentioned this previously, but I also just wanted to Look at this list. Look at this A team right here. Joni Tormala, Graham Carroll, Kem Volkbasi, I can never say his name, Frederick Rasmussen, Patrick Holzman, Nestor Garcia, Sebastian Job, Arlene Mallet, Robin Betka, and Zach Taylor. I know every single one of those names. That is the point here. I think, you know, when we talk about, you know, like Austin Ognoski's article on the future of esport from his perspective, uh, in a negative light, or looking at the potential failure potential, uh, we look at the other side of the coin in the article about uh, legitimization, Red Bull, and teams getting into it and things like that. Now, from my perspective, here's what I like. Here's a list of, what, 10 drivers? And I know all 10 of them by name because these are the who's who in sim racing because sim racing has at least elevated itself to the point that you know the big names. You know who the best are. And, and what's really good about this is that five years ago even, you might only know the name of two or three sim racers. It might only be a Martin Kroenke, a Gregor Hutu, or somebody who's like a, a championship in, in you know what was very few prestigious series going on. Now, with... The frequency and the magnitude of these events, guys like Patrick Holzman are household names to us sim racers, and that is in the positive direction when we're looking at the future of eSport. Uh, I said it a while ago. It might just be a matter of time until somebody says, hey, I want to wear a Graham Carroll jersey, uh, just like you would your favorite football, baseball, or basketball hero. Uh, those days are coming. Um, Jamie, I know. I just, br I, I, You know what? Thank you for pointing that out. I would like to apologize for the 10 names that I just butchered. I think I got a couple of them correctly. I think I got Graham Carroll and Patrick Holzman and Zach Taylor right. Other than that, I think I ruined all of them. So I'm very sorry, but I mean no offense and quite the opposite. I, I put you guys on a, a podium. You know, you guys are the gods of sim racing. Uh, what else? On a less serious note, TT Isle of Man right on the edge. It all comes to the Nintendo Switch, and they got a trailer video coming out. You know, as much as I love motorcycle sims, they don't translate that well to our controllers. You know, if there's a way that you should be, I think running on a Switch is almost as accurate as running on a steering wheel and pedal set. So maybe that is the ultimate platform for TT Isle of Man, a game that I did enjoy quite a bit. I played that when it came out. We, we did some footage of that when it came out. And I did have fun with it, but for me, it's just not the same thing as running a hardcore sim by the nature of the impossibility of getting a motorcycle sim into our computers. I, I just don't know what can do. Uh, also, in motorcycle sim racing news, MotoGP 19 races onto the Xbox One in June. So for those on the Xbox One who felt like the whole world has turned their back on them, nope, you'll get it in June. You'll be able to run that as well. Um... Let's see. Uh, 
Yeah, names will be butchered. I, I need a I should put a graphic up that anytime I say a name, it would be like the, you know, it'd be like my donation. Every time I do a name, I should press that graphic and have my disclaimer pop up. I like it. Great idea. Um <laughs> David Grenell. I got a 4X with those names and lost 200 I rating. Very good. Very good. Uh, Stan, there was a couple of different bike rigs back in the day. Uh, and a couple that were actually quite nice that we've shown on the, sh on the show from time to time. But the problem was... You know, and I'm not an avid motorcycler. Uh, I'm not even a motorcycler. That almost implied like I ride. I owned one motorcycle in my entire lifetime. That's my experience with riding bikes. Uh, and bicycles are different than motorcycles because they're powered. But, um, you know, you steer with your leaning. You steer with, with, with the, you know, it's not, it's not a turn the wheel to stern turn kind of thing. And the other thing is it's a lot of weight. I mean, the, the cent like, I, the G-forces and the centrifugal mass of the wheels spinning are part of what gives a motorcycle its ability for the rider to drive and steer it that way. And when you remove those two things and try to create a motion system or kind of any kind of active system, it's so slow and so far behind the game, in my opinion. It's just really, really hard for, for it to, to work like we do. I mean, even... You know, I hate to, to pull the curtain and let you guys see the guts, but I mean, if you think about it, even our steering wheels, we're sending a message to the game and there's a lag. The game is playing the game at this speed. We're sending messages back at this speed. The timing is not perfect, but it's almost unnoticeable. You translate in that into any kind of distance moving on a, on a bike, and I just feel like you're so far behind the game. It's like you have to start... You have to start like leading the bike ahead of what you're seeing. It'd probably screw you up for any other kind of racing you do. All of a sudden, you'd be like not even hitting creaming apexes. You'd be like in the dirt before the apex. <laughs> so anyway, uh, that's but but exciting to see him coming on to the Nintendo Switch in the case of TT Isle of Man and ride uh, Moto GP in the case of the Xbox One coming in June. Uh, Project Cars. We don't talk a lot about project cars and there are a few reasons for that uh number one project cars kind of pulled the plug on updates so there's not a lot going on in terms of the betterment of project cars uh they do have various esports series still running but they've already made announcements and talked about the future of project cars and slightly mad studios and with that we can kind of assume that that project cars or project cars 2 isn't going to see a whole lot more Anyway, for those going back in time with Project Cars, we're not even talking Project Cars 2, I guess they had pulled their achievements, and so those who are holding on to the oldest version, there wasn't even fun single-player stuff to do anymore, but apparently they have uh, changed things and have added a whole list of 25 events for 2019. You know, we're already halfway through March, so we probably missed a few of these already, uh, but there are new, so if you want to dust off Dust off the cover of your old uh, version of Project Cars. There might be some fun to be had out there. And I see somebody. Derek Spear is, in fact, in the house. Yeah, it needs a gyro or something to to work it. And I, I, I've thought about that. And it's like, I don't know enough about gyros. And it's like, that might do enough for the bike stability. But I'm not sure if that would do enough for the way you rode it or not. Um, but you would know more than me. Derek Spear in the house. If you've not seen Derek Spear design, go to Derek Spear Design. And check out some of his quality uh, controllers, button boxes, e-brakes, things like that, shifters. He's got all sorts of really cool gear over there and adapters. So uh, thank you for being here. I see Ben Worthens in the audience. How you doing, Ben? Mitchie Hoyer in the audience as well. Hello, everybody. Just picking out some names. James is here. A lot of good people. A lot of good friends are in the audience today. Uh, Simracer.es. They have a graphic configuration tutorial for VR in iRacing. Um, I've, you know, honestly, the times I've played VR and iRacing, I just turn it on. It seems to work. Uh, I know you can do things like, uh, overdrive, over push the pixels, pixel, pixel push or something like that. But anyway, here's a whole tutorial. So if you're struggling to get the results you want, 
you might want to go through this tutorial here. Again, this is at simracer.es, and I had to use Google Translate to use it, but you can see it's all there. Everything's highlighted. You'll know exactly what to do, and you can see if that increases or gets you better uh, VR experience. I got to get my VR. I have a VR rig that I'm building is what's going on. My main rig, we don't touch that. My main rig gets the cool gear. My uh, VR rig is going to be the extra rig and something I'll be doing for fun, but I don't feel that it... Uh, translates very well for streaming so it'll it'll just be for me what else uh race spot with the upcoming broadcast this gets sent in but i figure if you guys are looking some entertainment next big race would be what today that's round one at summit point in the uk and ireland monday night skippies that's at 9 p.m that's got to be that might be noon for us or maybe 1 p.m for them neo endurance series coming up on the 23rd club sports so cool broadcast at race spot and beyond that, it is time to talk about some cool rigs out there. Get your thoughts and opinions. How's this look to you? Here's a good, uh, I almost call that the ironing board. It looks like an adapted ironing board turned into a wheel stand. He's got his pedals down there on the carpet and a rolling chair. Actually, a really nice looking rolling chair. And a little bit far back from the TV for my liking. But you can see somebody's got a decent looking setup there for kind of a portable, whatever you got to do. Here we got like one of those Red Bull uh, play seats, it looks like. And how does this guy find the time? Anybody figure out what I'm talking about? How does this guy find the time to race? I love that fan setup. Maybe a little too much wind, but I swear I need that. I am Summer's coming, and I'm already starting to sweat in my room with the lights on. So I got to get on a new fan. My old fan, speaking of VR, my old fan literally died uh, in a VR tragic wreck. I wish I had it on camera for everybody to see. But where does this guy find the time to sim race and a nice looking setup there? And then finally, this one, uh, I saw the word sim pit and it made me think, what is he talking about? Uh, this is one of those cabinet rigs. I've seen a few variations of rigs like this. We talk about sim rigs being the girlfriend killer. Like no woman, no woman wants to see a, a, a sim rig in their house. They just don't. But anyway, here's a rig that as soon as they take that wheel and tuck the seat in, it closes up and becomes a usable cabinet of sorts. And you can see uh, Junior there. He literally did make this for his son. So it tidies up into a coffee table box. I don't think we get to see it in its closed configuration. I've seen a pro version of one of those that was like ten grand or something like that. Uh, and then finally, this is actually the last of the news. I think we're out of news. That's going to do it for today's show. Wow. Just like that, nothing else to talk about. Tonight, going on with Devin Booth. He usually starts this at about 6.30, so this is kind of a later one that goes on. Devin Booth is going to be running Mazda Mondays for some of the pit crew and some of his audience as well tonight. They're going to be at the Nürburgring GP track. They'll be starting about 6.30, and the race will actually begin at 6.15. It's the Advanced Mazda Series, so anyone with a C license or higher is welcome to join them. They just get out there and have a fun time, and Devin will be streaming that as well. So you can check that out if you're just looking for some fun. Go race with those guys or watch the stream and support the show as well, either way. And that officially does do it for today. I think I've tapped out in news. I Oh, wait, I had one more. Oh, hold on. Give me one second, you guys. I had one more story. Some Alexander Rossi uh, <laughs> Borges sent this in. Kind of funny when I leave it at Alexander Rossi. Let's bring this up real quick. Um, I, I saw a different one of these a while ago. This was just posted, but this is Nissan and Haptics with realistic touch and V and VR vehicle design. Um, anybody who's been playing with VR, I'm sure it's it's blown your mind. Not just in sim racing. Um, you know, when I do things in in VR, it blows my mind. To think of the future um, because I do think of this as like a baby step VR right now is just the first baby step in what is going to be mind-blowing tech in the next decade and the things they're going to be able to do I mean if you really think about it if you ever watched movies like the matrix or ready player one uh, you know these futuristic thoughts that we see aren't that far off um, I was talking to somebody about a haptic suit and it's like, yeah, but how long do you think it'll take before you can put a little diode on your temple and it just goes into your brain and tells you you're hot or cold 
or what you're smelling. You know, right now we're still working on these devices that we work, we put on, whether they be haptic gloves or the thought of a haptic suit, which is basically the concept of a million butt kickers all over your body or heat or cold or any of these kind of things. Um, yes, we could do all that in the physical world with gloves, with suits, with VR goggles, things like that. But how long? How long is it really till they just tap right into the old noggin and just feed that telemetry, feed that information right into you? Would you even need a motion sim? Are they going to be able to feed you G-forces and speed sensation and speed blur? All the things we want and expect from the gaming. Is it going to be VR? Is it going to be AR? Or is it going to be right in the old brain? And... Are you going to let them plug you in? What if it's the best sim racing experience ever? Is that worth plugging in? But what if there is a virus? What does a virus mean when it's actually tapped into your head? Anyway, uh, that video just made me think of the future. I, I Every time I play in VR, I think, man, the things you could do with VR right now are amazing. It's being so underutilized because the software, let's face it, the software is nowhere compared to where the tech could be in the VR experience. Like, the biggest letdown for me in VR right now, and I'm being really honest, isn't the quality of the VR. It's the lack of things you can do with your VR. And some of the stuff that's still out there is so yesterday, and yet when you play some of the cutting-edge stuff, you're like, what is the holdup? What is taking them so long to utilize this tech properly? That's how I really feel about VR. Uh, the future is going to be big, but it's still going to be a little bit of a wait till it's really where it, it, I don't know if it'll, we could even use the word like until, uh, I don't even know if we can say something like if it's ever going to get where it's going to go because there never might not ever be a final destination. I made a mess of that thought, but hopefully you guys followed me. Total recall. There you go. Um, yes. <laughs> World domination through diodes on your temple. Anyway, that is going to do it for this show. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you for being part of the pit crew. Be sure to come back Wednesday for another edition of the news. And we will have some other streams, videos, and things coming out this week for sure. So it should be a busy week here at the Sim Pit. But that's going to do it for this one. This is the Sim Pit. I'm Sean Cole. And I'll see you on the track.